So electrons can have a wavelength, protons can have a wavelength, all bits of matter have what's called a de Broglie wavelength, and they actually can interfere just like water waves can. So then the new uh, sort, of, sort of picture started to evolve. Instead of a nucleus, and instead of a hard ball called an electron going around like a solar system, maybe the uh, distance from the nucleus is just such that the electron isn't whirling around like this. Maybe its wave-like character is waving and able to connect back in on itself in a special orbit at a certain radius away. And that's why it's stable, and that's why it doesn't lose energy. So you can kind of think of the uh, orbital radius, the stable orbit of an electron not losing energy. Not, it's not losing energy because it's not a ball that's whirling around at all. It's a stable wave that connects back the head of the wave connects back to the tail of the wave. And so it's a stable place where the electron can do its wiggling and the, the front of it connects with the back of it and form a stable wave. If you think of a piece of string waving and then connecting back on itself, then it would form a stable configuration where it can do the oscillation and the waving. If it were too close to the nucleus, then it wouldn't close on itself and it wouldn't be a stable wave. And so electrons don't really exist with a high probability too close to the nucleus, for instance. I'll draw a picture, but that is the, the crux and the core of the idea here. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.